Today's video is all about creating a one layer card. These are pretty easy to create and go through beautifully in the mail. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. I would love it if you subscribed, liked this video and shared it with your friends. Let's take a look at the supplies that I'm using today. I have the Garden Path Stamp and Stencil Set from Concord and Ninth. I believe this came out in March of 2024 and I hadn't had a chance to use it yet, but I loved the concept of it. I'm also going to be using the Old Letter Background Stamp from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to be using a white piece of cardstock from Concord and Ninth that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I put a little bit of repositionable tape on the back of it to secure it down to my work surface so it doesn't slide around while I start to ink blend. So this stencil is going to make it super easy to create a one layer card because there are, for one, etchings on there to tell you what layer of the stencil it is, but there are also etchings on there to help you line it up with your A2 size card panel. So I'm using those guides to line that up with my cardstock. And you can already see this is going to create a border. So it's going to almost look like we layered it onto our card front, but really it's just going to be all ink blended. So I played around with a few different color combinations when it came to this stencil, and I'll be sharing those at the end. So be sure to stick around for that. But for this card, I decided to go with a really light background. I am using Pebble Ink from Concord and Ninth, and to begin with, I'm starting with a flat blending brush. I found this to be very helpful when I wanted to get a light application of ink. If I were to come in with a domed blending tool, I found I was getting just too much color applied to the background, and I really only wanted a light application. Now, right now, after that first layer of the stencil is removed, it does look kind of dark. But keep in mind, inks will dry back. And that is something I needed to keep in mind here in just a second. I'll show you. But that gray will dry back. So it's going to be very soft. Now, this is the second layer of the stencil. Again, it has the etchings on there. So I can line it up with the corners of my card front. And now for this layer of the stencil is is uh, blending on those large flowers and I am using nectar once again I'm using a flat blending brush because I wanted to have just a light uh, application or a light dusting of this color in hindsight I should have gone a little more heavier handed with it I'll explain a little bit as we go along and the card starts coming together but in that layer of the stencil that second layer I would have added maybe a little bit darker shading to the edges of the petals. This next layer of the stencil is going to be filling in the flowers and the centers. And even though we do have the etchings again to line up with our card front, you can also visually see where it's going to line up. So there are three different areas on here. You can do them all in the same color or you can change up your colors. So for those kind of medium sized flowers, I am going to be doing grapefruit. And for this, I did decide to switch to a small blending brush and I'm masking off the other areas of the stencil so I don't get that grapefruit color in those areas. I just wanted those medium sized flowers to be that color. I'm just using some post-it tape to mask off those areas, but anything that has kind of a gentle stick to it will work well. Post-it notes work really well there too. For the center of the flowers, I am going to be using buttercup ink. And for these, I'm going to have one side of the center of that flower kind of be darker than the other. So I'm having more of a gradient from one side to the other. And then I'm going to move on to those smaller flowers to fill in the rest of that scene. And for this, I'm going to be use Harbor. This is another one where I wanted a very light application of this color. I kind of started out by just going around the outer edges and just lightly touching the center of those flowers. Again, masking off certain areas so I don't contaminate that blue with my grapefruit. And then for the next layer of the flower, which is, or of this stencil set, is going to be filling in the leaves. And I decided to do something a little bit different. Instead of going with your typical green leaves, I do have examples of that later on at the end, I thought it would be fun to come in with a dark blue. And this happens to be blueberry. Now I did switch back to this flat blending brush because I wanted it to just be 
Now, like I said, a dusting of that color. Blueberry or any of these dark colors can really get carried away if you're not careful on how much pressure you're applying to your blending brush. So I just went over those leaves with that blueberry and then I'll remove this stencil, bring in the last layer of the stencil, and that is going to be filling in the centers of the flowers and also a little bit of detail on the leaves. Now I did kind of go back and forth and thought process on this on what I wanted the center of the flowers to be. Uh, for the smaller flowers, I decided to come in with a darker shade of blue. So this one is midnight. And then I'm going to do the other flowers. Well, I also use that dark blue for the, the detail of the leaves. And then for the center of the medium sized flower and also the center of my large flowers, I'm going to be using nutmeg. So once again, I'm just using some post-it tape to kind of mask off those areas. And this is where it is handy to have some smaller blending brushes on hand because you can really kind of focus in on those areas without having to use your post-it tape. And that is all the stenciling. So right here, the stencil did all the work for us where it gave us that really nice white margin around the edge. But I'm going to step this up just a little bit by adding some more stamping to this. So I have my Misty tool here and I took the foam insert out because I'm going to be using a red rubber stamp that already has the foam on it. So I needed to remove that foam insert. I put a repositionable tape on the back of my cardstock to secure it down to the Misty. And then I'm using my post-it tape to go around those edges that the stencil had masked off for us. So when I do my background stamp, I just want to have the letters be in that blended area and I want to keep that white edge. This is the old letter stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and of course this step is completely optional. I just like having a little bit more interest to my backgrounds. So to do this, I have, I picked it up at the door of the Misty. I'm using Pebble Ink and my Pebble Ink is pretty intense for being a light gray. So I took a paper towel and just dabbed it over some of the areas of that background stamp to kind of help pick up some of the ink and soften that. So I stamped that down and it does look pretty vibrant right now, but again, keep in mind these inks are going to dry back. Now I'm just coming in and removing the post-it tape and I think this is the first time it has ever happened to me where my post-it tape ripped my cardstock. I don't think I've ever had this product rip my cardstock. It was just a little bit down in the bottom left-hand corner. I was not going to redo this card. I put a lot of work into it. It's just a little bit down in that corner. So I am leading with it, <laughs> imperfections and all. So for the sentiment, I picked one off of the Garden Path stamp set. These sentiments are curved and meant to fill in that open area there that is in between the flowers. So I picked out one of those sentiments and I'm inking it up with a VersaFine Nocturne ink and I'm going to stamp it down. Nocturne ink stamps beautifully on the first try and I also conditioned my stamp really well beforehand so I only need to stamp this once. I was really happy with this color combination. This is one that I have actually used before on a winter card. So sometimes when I'm struggling with color combinations, I will look back at ones that I've used in the past and just use that in a new light. So these were at the time a winter card, but I turned it into a floral card. I created a side folding card base and I'm just going to add some tape runner to the back of this panel and attach it to the card base. I was fiddling a lot with that bottom corner, really debating if I should leave it or not. It was just such, it was kind of bugging me, but yet I put a lot of work into this and didn't want to redo it again. So that is my finished card project for that. But I want to show you other examples that I did off screen. There's another card that is completely finished. Uh, something happened to my footage. I had filmed it, but something with, went wrong. But I still wanted to share it with you because it is a beautiful bright color combination compared to the one I just did. And then I also have some other backgrounds I did. I was just kind of playing with different things. This one has more of that bright peach in the background with bright pink and yellow flowers. And this one has more of a dark background that I think I did with eucalyptus. So these are just to give you an idea of what it looks like with different backgrounds in there. And now in my close-up pictures, you can see that my flower did dry back quite a bit where I used the nectar. So I definitely would recommend going around those edges with a little bit more of a heavy hand to get it to stand out a little bit more. 
So there is my one layer wonder. It is a one layer card that is ready to hit the mailbox off to a recipient. All of my supplies will be linked down below in the video description and over on my blog. Thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.